Namaste, Namaskar, Vanakam, Sastri Call, and welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali, and today we're going to be reacting to the second, um, sorry. That's a good. The, the second reaction to 25 Amazing Scientific Reasons Behind Indian Traditions and Culture. <laughs> she said that really fast, so I hope you guys got that. But yesterday, and you'll have to check the other one so we did the first half but it was like a 30 minute video and so we thought we would break it up into two smaller videos so if you haven't seen the first half of it watch that first and then watch the second half of 25 amazing scientific reasons behind Indian tradition and culture and um, it was really interesting when we did the first half yeah. to see like why namaste and you know it was pressure points and it was every finger had a different, had meaning. A different meaning yeah and um you know and the the bindi you know putting it there in the pressure and there was a few things we knew like the turmeric i know has a lot of healing powers to it the powders really made sense to me but stuff like earrings. bangles and earrings and things that like not only are they pretty but had some meaning behind it that was helping keeping your body and your energy, um, yeah. the henna, keeping you calm before the wedding, like just amazing, amazing stuff. So we're excited to watch the other half of this. And like I said, if you haven't seen the first half, watch that first and then come back and watch the second half. All right, let's start it up. The chanting of Om helps the mind calm down, thoughts recede, and there is an instant feeling of peace and calm. Om is considered the primordial sound of the universe, the first sound. This universal sound is a combination of three syllables, A, U, and Ma. When we pronounce Om, as we say A, the lower portions of the body up to the stomach are activated. As we say U, the chest area is activated. With Ma, the face and the brain gets activated. The proper pronunciation of Om ensures good intake of oxygen required for a good body and mind. Mystics say that Om is like the clapping of one hand. Chanting Om ensures peace and quiet which relaxes the body and the mind. In Indian culture, Tulsi is accorded the status of mother. Tulsi is also called holy or sacred so basil. The spiritual and medicinal properties of Tulsi are renowned the world over. Tulsi is an important adaptogenic herb which helps to reduce stress. Tulsi is a remarkable antibiotic. Its medicinal properties are renowned. It helps to cure several ailments, including the common cold. Mm. Containing no caffeine or other stimulants, Tulsi helps to increase physical endurance. Taking a Tulsi every day helps to maintain the physiological balance in the body and increases immunity. More important, Tulsi increases your lifespan. Keeping a Tulsi plant at home keeps the insects and mosquitoes away. It is said that even snakes are kept at bay. In India, every traditional household from time immemorial to this day has a Tulsi plant for both its spiritual and medicinal significance. Wow. Certain trees were venerated in India. Ooh, Daddy used Most to important about this tree. among them was the, the people are on tree. The, outside. the people tree neither had tasty food nor strong wood. So why then was this tree considered so important? The people tree was capable of generating oxygen 24 hours a day. Our ancestors knew that the people tree generated oxygen day and night, making it vital to maintain the ecological balance. By associating this tree with the divine, our ancestors made sure that it was never cut or damaged in any way. 
Interesting. Certain trees were considered sacred in India. The neem, the odhambar, and the peepal tree are some of them. These trees are propagated by seeds dropped by birds. The odhambar tree is associated with Lord Dattatreya. So what makes these trees so important? All these trees had the capacity to generate oxygen through the day. Our ancestors, understanding that these trees were important to maintain ecological balance, ensured that they were never cut or destroyed in any way by associating them with the divine. In traditional India, people ate their meals seated cross-legged on the floor. What were the benefits of eating meals seated in this posture? By sitting in Sukhasana, as this posture was called, the body relaxed, making the body ready for the digestive process. Also, the constant movement of bending forward and straightening up made sure that digestive juices were released, enhancing speedy digestion. While sitting and getting up, joints were made more flexible removing ailments like arthritis. So, there were several benefits to eating your meals in the traditional way, seated in Sukhasana. Hmm, interesting. Our ancestors stressed the fact that every meal should start with spicy foods and end with the sweets. What was the scientific rationale behind this theory? It is well known that when we take spicy foods, the body secretes digestive juices and acids which enhance the digestive process. Sweets contain a lot of carbohydrates which make for sluggish digestion. Also, the intake of sugar enhances the absorption of amino acids tryptophan. Tryptophan increases the levels of serotonin, a neurotransmitter associated with the feelings of well-being. That is the feeling that we experience at the end of a full meal. This was the rationale behind our ancestors stressing that every meal should start with spicy foods and end with sweets. Fasting is one of the important tenets of we Ayurveda. Ending on sweets, but Ayurveda is based on the premise that most ailments stem sweets. from the fact that there are toxic materials retained in the body. By fasting, we help to cleanse the system and regulate body functioning. A complete fasting is good for health with occasional sips of lime juice. The body contains 80% liquid and 20% solid, just like the earth. The gravitational force of the moon sometimes creates disturbances mm -hmm. in the body. Fasting helps to cut down the intake of acids, thus regulating stress and hysteria. Modern research shows that fasting helps to correct several ailments including Alzheimer's, cancer and diabetes. There is a popular misconception that by fasting we become weak. On the contrary, by fasting the system is cleansed and physiological balance is maintained. A day of fasting helps the digestive system and helps the proper functioning of several organs like the liver, kidney, pancreas, etc. The human body has seven chakras, starting with the base chakra or the muladhara and ending with the highest chakra or the Sahasrara or Sahasradala. The Sahasradala is also defined as the thousand petaled lotus. The Kundalini, energy that lies coiled like a serpent at the base chakra, can be made to rise through yogic exercises right up to the Sahasradala. The enlightened master, his one, who through his spiritual practices raises the Kundalini from the Muladhara to the Sahasradala past the Shikha. Shushrut, the surgeon of Ayurveda, described this spot as the Adipati Marma. In the brain, this spot coincides with the Brahma Randra, the point where the Sushumna arrives from the lower part of the body. The Shikha covers this spot, protects it and preserves the energy, also called Ojas. 
In Indian culture, it is customary to bend down and touch the feet of elders as greeting. It is said that by doing this, you acquire intellect, knowledge, strength, and fame. There is a scientific reason behind this analysis. The body is the storehouse of energy, negative and positive. The left side represents negative energy, the right, the positive energy. When we bend down and touch the feet of our elders, it indicates that we are surrendering our ego at their feet. This gives rise to karuna or compassion within them. As we touch their feet, this energy is passed on to us, thus also creating an instant liking between two hearts and minds. The nerves from the brain are spread out through the body and when we touch another person, it forms a circuit, thereby transmitting energy from one person to the other. We become the receiver and the other person is the giver of energy. If we sleep with our heads towards the north, we invite evil spirits and ghosts. A myth, but there was a scientific reason to why we should not sleep with our heads towards the north. It is well known that the earth has a magnetic field. It is also known that the body has a magnetic field of its own. When we sleep with our heads towards the south, then the unlike poles of the earth and the body attract each other. We wake up in the morning with a sense of well-being, of having slept well and rested. Similarly, when we sleep with our heads towards the east, the energy of the sun enters the body through the head and leaves through the feet, leaving you with a cool head and warm feet. When we sleep with our heads towards the west, the reverse happens, leaving you with a warm head and cool feet, an unpleasant sensation. Also, when we sleep with our heads towards the north, the iron in our body tends to coagulate in the brain, creating disturbances, headaches and unpleasantness. This causes a lot of disorders, including Alzheimer's, cognitive disorders, Parkinson's and several other neurological problems. This was the reason why our forefathers insisted that we sleep with our heads towards the south or the east. A saint and his disciples were walking along the bank of the Ganges one day. They came upon two people shouting angrily at each other. The sage decided that this was as good a time as any to teach his disciples a valuable lesson for life. Why do people shout at each other when they're angry? asked the sage. Because they lose their calm, said one disciple. Several explanations were offered, but none of them were satisfactory. The sage then explained, when people are angry, their hearts grow far from each other. They have to shout to be heard. When people love each other, their hearts are close to each other. They speak softly and can be heard. They need not speak at all. Their eyes can communicate their feelings. When you are angry, said the sage, don't let your hearts grow too far apart or it may not be possible to come back. Throwing coins hmm. into the well brought good luck. What was the scientific reason behind this custom? Tanks, ponds, rivers were the ancient water bodies. Also, coins in traditional India were made of copper, unlike the steel ones that we use today. One of the properties of copper was that when it was thrown into the water, it helped the dust particles to settle to the bottom, thereby making the drinking water available on top. Copper was also an important element needed for the body. By bringing in this custom, our ancestors assured that there was a daily intake of copper.
Remember the traditional punishment where you crossed your hands across your chest, held alternate earlobes and sat down and got up as many times as the master demanded? This was a punishment that was in vogue from the days of the Gurukulam. But there was also a scientific rationale behind this punishment. As you sat down and got up several times, blood circulation was improved, stimulating better concentration and memory power. This is one I have not By seen. crossing the hands across your chest and holding alternate lobes, there was fine coordination between the right and left sides of the brain. By pressurizing the points on the ear lobes, brain cells were stimulated, thus decreasing learning disabilities in weak students. This had so many interesting scientific facts, backgrounds of stuff that you yeah. didn't think really had any kind of meaning or significance to it, which no. is kind of interesting. Like that there was almost everything that she talked about in the first one and in this one had some kind of reason behind it that made it have a purpose. You know, it wasn't just you're sitting on the floor to eat your dinner you know, because that's what everybody does in India. No, yeah. there's like, you know, the bending helps the digestion. Like she said, eating spicy food first and then the sweets. Then the sweet, so yeah. it speeds up your like body digestion at the beginning. And then when you eat the sweets at the end, it kind of gives you that full feeling and slows your, your body down. So it makes sense. Like here we do the same, except not so much spicy food but sweets were always like the after dinner the dessert yeah. like the special treat when after you finished your healthy stuff or your good stuff um so kind of similar but you know when you think about it a little bit more it does have it makes a lot of sense um and that there's like a better meaning you know like our ancestors weren't crazy <laughs> <laughs> you know they didn't just make stuff up you know, it's not all like wives' tales, old wives' tales. Like, there is some truth behind it and some scientific reasoning for your body, too. You know, yeah. like, oh, um, she was like, as you say it, you know, wakes your body up and up to your head. Like, that was really interesting. Like, I, I get that it's relaxing, but I didn't realize it was like the way you said it, you know, was supposed to kind of bring awareness up. Through yeah. your body. So that was interesting. What Another like? thing was like the wishing well, which is mm. something like we do here. Like we'll throw coins in the water yep. to make, make like a wish. a wish. Yeah. And so in our zoo, they have this place where you can throw a coin in the water where there's no fish. Mm -hmm. So like it doesn't, you know, a fish doesn't eat it and stuff like that. And she was saying like the copper helps mm -hmm. to make the clean water so you can like drinkable water on mm -hmm. the top. Right. And also, you're supposed to get a little bit of copper in your body, she was saying, yeah. too, which I thought was interesting. Um, something you wouldn't have known. Like, no. yeah, you just, you know, a lot of times for us, it's uh, not like a drinking fountain fountain. It's more like a decorative fountain that yeah. you throw the money in. And um, like, it, like Anjali said, at our zoo, they collect it and it kind of goes into the... Um, funding for the zoo so yeah. you know you make your wish but it also helps with the you know the animals and stuff so um but yeah there's just so many really interesting facts and things yeah. um you know learning about i was trying to think if there's something else we missed that we forgot to talk about hmm the trees too oh yeah daddy talked about the trees the Tulsa tree um, that was outside. He said you would have it outside your house in like a um, somewhat of a decorative pot. And it was um, medicine values. So uh, when you were not feeling well, but she was saying too, like something you could um, have every day that was kind of to help you um, not get sick. So kind of help your immunity. And then um, daddy used to say too, like, the women would go and do puja around it in the morning as well so just so interesting to see the different things that make there's a bigger reason behind them you know than yeah. not cutting the trees down these specific trees because they knew that they had 24 hours a day gave oxygen and it was helpful for the world so they connected them with um you know certain gods so that people wouldn't cut them down 
um, you know, kind of a nice way to do it. But it's interesting that they knew these things way back when, you know, yeah. not just like now. So, all right. I hope you guys like this as much as we did. And if you like this video, don't forget to click that like button down below because the more you like it, the more YouTube shares our videos. And don't forget to subscribe and join our wonderful family. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.